Well, hello there. In this uh, series of uh, tutorials, what I'm going to do is take this tutorial of Brandon's and I'm going to take it from Photoshop to Interactive Components in Catalyst. You know, when Brandon did this, I took one look at it and said, whoa, hold on, I can make the static image uh, that Brandon is making available to you, I can make this interactive so we can have a whole bunch of interactive pieces in here. So I got hold of Brandon and said, what do you think? And he said, have at it. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm having at it. Now, the first step in the process, of course, was to download the PSD, which I did. And I took one look at it and realized I got a bit of a problem. Uh, the problem is right here. Drop down menu and the uh, progress bar. Uh, Catalyst doesn't do the, these two, so they had to go. The uh, Other than that, everything else was workable. The next step in the process for me was to just go through the various layers and see how the image was constructed or the various uh, components were constructed and really take a look at how the layering was done and uh, the effects that were used and so on because I want to get this over to Catalyst and Catalyst does uh, some interesting work with this stuff but what you need to do is be aware that you don't necessarily need to go as crazy as Brandon has here. You still need the bits and pieces, I don't deny that, and I don't deny that you need to do the design, but once you get it done, then you can start simplifying it a little bit for Catalyst. Now let me explain what I did here. I made a copy of this file, and this is the file I created from Brandon's file. Now I've got this big white area here because I'm going to use it in Catalyst to throw some text in. I'm going to actually scroll through the text. Now you'll notice I've kept the uh, input field, uh, the buttons, uh, the checkbox and the radio button. This is the uh, D-pad and there's that uh, button. And you'll notice there's some stuff missing here. There's the unchecked and checked state. There's the unradioed and radioed state, selected and unselected. Uh, there's the up and down state of this. I'm missing a state there. I'm missing one of the input fields. Actually, I'm not. If you uh, take a look at the, uh, uh, we'll, do, we'll deal with the down button first, this one here, download this button. You'll notice that I've turned off the hover. And the hover is directly under this. So if I turn off the normal and turn on the hover, you see, there it is. So I haven't lost it. I just turned it off and put it underneath. The reason being that I can use this in Catalyst in exactly this form. So I really don't need to do much other than say, look, when uh, this button is clicked, this becomes visible. Same thing with the uh, check boxes. The check's not gone, it's still there, see? Same thing with the uh, radio button. The uh, dot is not gone, it's still there. And the D-pad was a little bit uh, different. And what I did was I renamed the layers and I named them top, bottom, left, and right. And the plan is, is if the user rolls over, say, this top here, this top arrow, these arrows here, the three below, are actually going to be reduced opacity. I'm going to take them down to about 45% opacity. So that this is visible and these sort of disappear. And if you roll off, everything comes back. The uh, input field, same thing. If uh, I come to the text field here, you can see that I've just turned off the, uh, the focus. So this is all nicely prepared and ready to go for Catalyst, and let's get it into Catalyst. And when you flame up Catalyst, what you want to do is just create a new project from a design file, and you're going to select Adobe Photoshop PSD. You select it, you can navigate to the folder or file, that you're going to be using, which is this one here for me. Click open and it builds the file. The width and the height are the width and the height of the PSD document, so I didn't touch a thing there. Resizable is a really cool new feature in uh, Catalyst CS 5.5 and I'm going to show it to you, uh, not in this tutorial, but in the next one. There's that background color where I can get rid of the uh, background layer in uh, uh, in the Photoshop document. I'm going to keep everything editable just in case I need to make changes and I can import non-visible layers. The, remember those layers I turned off? I can bring them in. So I click OK and what Catalyst does is it just compiles everything, builds the file for me, puts everything where it belongs and you can see there it is there. There are the folders. There's everything that uh, came in. 
and was named up properly inside of uh, Photoshop. And there's that background layer, and all I have to do to get rid of the background layer is click that. You click the trash can, background layer is gone, and I've got the the artboard. This is called the artboard. The background color for the artboard is now white. Now, one other thing, if if you do make a mistake, not all is lost. You know, you're looking at this and you go, oh, wrong, wrong color or something like that. You can actually right click or just select a component here, one of these. Right click on it and you see that you can actually go edit in Photoshop. And if you do do that, you're going to need to uh, go get an FXG importer. You can get that at Adobe Labs. But you can edit these things after they come into uh, Catalyst. So your Photoshop skills are not totally you don't lose your Photoshop skills. They're still needed. So there you go. There's how we uh, took that uh, idea, brought it into uh, Catalyst. And in the uh, next exercise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire up these two buttons and this button. I'll see you there.